So I wanted to build a gaming PC featuring the brand new fractal design North. The problem is I only have $900. This is the result. A $900 gaming PC with an Intel Core i5 and an RTX 3060. And if you're not sure what that means, it's pretty fast. So you can play games like Cyberpunk and even Minecraft with shaders. And you can even stream without it even breaking a sweat. And personally, I think it looks pretty crisp. And with this build, we are aiming for a mix between aesthetic and performance. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Hey, wait a minute. How is this build so affordable? Now, here's a disclaimer. You might not be able to find the exact components I used because of stock and inventory, but I will show you how to build something similar for around the same amount. And even better, it will look as crisp and clean as this one, I assure you. So quickly, for the performance part, we have the 6-core, 12-thread Intel Core i5-12400F, which I purchased on the used market for around $120-ish. I paired this up with an Asus Prime B660 motherboard, which is one of the best priced performance boards currently available and can often be found on sale. I got it for around $120, also used. And for the RAM, this is also a used DDR4 kit from Corsair clocked at 3200 MHz, which I was able to grab pretty cheap as well. Now if you're looking to save a couple of dollars, you can go for something like a Ryzen 5 5600 or a 5600G, which nowadays you can find for just around $100, and then you can pair it up with something like a B450M a motherboard for about $45. Subscribe if you like to build a really cheap gaming PC, because I got a 5600 build just around the corner. Anyway, for the CPU cooler, you can definitely go for the stock cooler that comes included with the CPU, but again, we are going with a mix between a price to performance and aesthetic. I went for this super cheap pure rock cooler from Be Quiet, which I was able to get used for about 25 ish dollars. Now for the SSD, you should definitely aim for 1TB, as these have become so damn cheap nowadays. A good one I typically recommend that offers excellent price to performance is the WD and Blue SN570, as well as the MP33, but I will make sure to link up the best deal I can find down below. Moving on to the power supply, and here I went for this unit from a VGA with enough headroom for upgrades later down the road. Now I do recommend aiming for at least 600 watts, and you should be able to find a good unit for around 40 to perhaps 60 dollars. Finally, as I mentioned in the introduction for the graphics card, we find an RTX 3060. Now I know most of you guys actually prefer Nvidia over AMD for several reasons, but the thing is, right now you can actually get an RX 6700 XT, which is basically one tier up in performance compared to the 3060 for the same price, okay? I just want you guys to be aware that you can get more performance for the same amount, and AMD is currently the go-to. I think the 3060 is a great graphics card, don't get me wrong. It is just not the best deal in terms of performance. Anyway, as for the aesthetic of the build, I think it looks pretty good. But I'm gonna be 100% transparent with you guys. Uh, I actually tried to get my hands on the white SOTAC RTX 3060, but yeah, I wasn't able to find one. But other than that, I think the black and white color scheme really aligns with the rest of the build. All in all, I'm pretty happy anyways. Now before we take a look at the gaming performance, here's the entire part list. And as you can see, I paid right around $900 for the entire build. I should say though that I had some luck with some parts here. I think you can get away perhaps even cheaper if you do have some patience, but I also want to say that in case you decide to buy completely new parts, and again I will be linking up all PC parts down in the video description. Now for the case we paid $130, but you can definitely go for something cheaper and save a few dollars here. I can happily say that it's a fantastic case. Now it shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, but as we can see we get 
getting very impressive numbers at 1080p gaming with the RTX 3060. Now the 3060 does compete with cards like the RX 6600 and typically outperforms older cards like the 2070. It's a solid 1080p card, but thanks to a large 12GB VRAM buffer, you should definitely go for 1440p if your monitor supports it. Although, as always, to stay around the 60fps mark, you may want to consider dropping the settings just a tiny bit. In Fortnite 1080p DX12 medium settings, we're getting around 175fps. Minecraft with shaders, 155fps. In Halo Infinite, we're getting solid 75fps. In Dying Light 2, 1080p high settings, 66 FPS. In Cyberpunk 2077, at high settings, 67 FPS. Warzone 2.0, 1080p at ultra settings, almost 80 FPS. Apex Legends, 1080p low settings with ultra textures, 240 FPS on average. Now, since I do have a bunch of GPUs to test with, I figured why not throw in several GPUs to give you guys an idea of the performance difference and what you can expect if you, let's say, go for something other than the 3060. So, in terms of an average of 11 games in total at 1080p resolution, the 3060 is a slight bit ahead of the 6600, but only about 2%. So, but if we take a look at the 6700 XT, for example, the difference between the two is quite large, despite the fact that both are selling for around the same price. So, that is definitely something that you want to have in mind. Now, at 1440p resolution, the gap between the 3060 and the 6600 grows even more. And what we can say though is that overall, you can definitely do 1440p with this GPU fairly well across 11 games that we tested. We are scoring over 60 FPS on average, which is pretty good if you plan to play at 1440p. Overall, this is a solid build for right around $900. You get good performance for your money. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Links to all parts can be found down in the description.